Hi, baby. Hi, Ashi. <laughs> Hello, baby. <laughs> yes, I know. It is absolutely incredible when out of the blue, this guttural chuff comes right back at you. It's literally like having a conversation with a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hello, my baby. You can't complain at that welcome, can you? Mm. Although, she's got yeah. some pretty bad breath. Yeah. Hey, no surprises that she needs some dental yeah. work. It's a good job she's a bit deaf as well. She wouldn't <laughs> take kindly to you saying that. Oh, I know. It's good, offensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how has it come to your attention that she has issues with the teeth? Just really by watching the way she eats, because normally they should quite comfortably be able to chew through hide and grind bone, and she's been very sensitive and reluctant to do that to the point that we've had to cut her meat up for her like, oh. a, like a baby. Oh. So she just gets like a little bit of fresh. I know exactly. Aisha's reluctance to eat really does tell me that she's in quite a lot of pain, and that rancid breath would definitely suggest that there's some sort of rotting teeth present in her mouth and they're going to have to come out. At 19 years old, she is, you know, pretty much twice the age that a tiger would be living to in the wild. And of course, they weren't really designed in a way to live that long. And so their teeth, um, it's not unusual that their teeth would be giving them some problems at this age. There's not many grannies out there that have got all their own teeth. No, exactly. <laughs> in fairness to them, it's... yeah. Charlotte has arranged a specialist veterinary dentist to perform the extractions. And while Aisha's under anaesthetic, Scott will be in charge of carrying out a full health check on the geriatric tiger. How are you feeling about yet another anaesthetic on one of your elderly tigers? Yeah, it's just an emotional roller coaster, really. But no, we can't say, well, we're scared about the potential consequences of knocking her out, and therefore we're not going to do it. You and know? she spends every day suffering. Yeah, so no, we have to do it. And just with humans, anaesthesia gets more dangerous, obviously, as you get older. So. Of course, there's always the worst case scenario, which is never far from your mind. It's always with trepidation. I never sleep well the night before. Um, gin and tonic always helps. <laughs> I know that we'll all do our very best to make sure Yeah, she you comes certainly through. will. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sort you right out. Yes, we are. So now the culmination of all your hard work to train them to the point where will actually allow an anaesthesia without a gun. Definitely, it takes a lot of hard work. On the Isle of Wight, it's the day before surgery on elderly tiger Aisha, and Scott wants to check up on the unusual training she's been undergoing in preparation for the risky anaesthetic. Last time I was here to perform surgery on a tiger, we needed to use a dart gun to deliver the anaesthetic. But this time round, Keeper Kaz has been doing some really interesting work with Aisha to try and reduce the stress of her anaesthetic. If you imagine yourself, I'm running round after you with a giant gun wanting to shoot you in the bottom with a high-pressure dart. Yeah. It's I not hate when you do that, Kaz. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but then afterwards, you're not going to want to be anywhere near me, are you? Good girl. When you're doing training, mm -hmm. it's all very, very positive. Uh, it's a very cooperative relationship. I ask the cat to do something. If they do it, they get a reward. Mm -hmm. Not only is the animal less stressed, but there's a lot less adrenaline, so we need to use less sedata to actually knock them down, which in the long run is a lot healthier for the animal as well. Aisha, come along. Come along. Down. OK, go ahead. So I'm sort of pinching like the little sting of a needle might feel yeah, when we do the anaesthetic. And how long has this taken you to actually achieve? I have been working on it for about six weeks. Wow. Aisha's a really intelligent character, bless her, so it doesn't take her long to actually um, understand what it is I want from her. Aisha doesn't know Scott very well, so that would have been quite a new experience for her. And I think she did absolutely fantastic. She was, did really, really well. Come along. Mm. Down. It's mm. amazing. This is really, really positive. I'm, I'm really You've excited. You've done a fantastic about. job. Thank Kaz. you. So, Thank you very much. I'm chuffed for you, and she's chuffing at <laughs> she, you. She is. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is doing this trial run an amazing example of the work that keepers put in with their charges, but also it's very clear that Aisha needs this dental work because even the treats that we're using, she's really struggling to eat them. So we definitely need to perform the dental on her tomorrow. 
I'm so glad that you're putting in this work yeah. because I think it makes our job easier. It means that the risk for the animal is so much less, less okay. anaesthetic, and hopefully uh, Charlotte, our boss, will be happy. Fingers crossed. That's what I dream of. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling? Um, yeah, a bit butterfly-ish. Next morning on the Isle of Wight, it's time for 19-year-old Tiger Aisha's surgery. Kind of like to just fast forward, really, and get to the point where we're waking her up and everything's gone smoothly. Charlotte has assembled a team of experts from around the UK to make sure everything goes smoothly for her elderly cat. We've got John Lewis. He specializes in anesthesia, big cats and also primates, but he works all over the world. He works out in the wild in Siberia, for example, with tigers there. So yeah, he's the guy that you want in charge of, of the knockout, definitely. We've got Matthew Oxford. So he specializes in veterinary dentistry. Matthew Twitchett, who's our local vet, who has overall care of the animals on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, we've got Scott. So she's got a good A-team around her. Are we all ready? Yep. Okay, go for it. Shut it in. Yes. Aisha! With the team in okay. place, it's time for the crucial final part of Aisha's anaesthetic training. Mm -hmm. Aisha? Down? Mm -hmm. I'll Aisha can't eat so close to surgery. So this time, Kaz will be relying on just the sight and scent of the meat to guide the big cat into position so John can safely inject the anaesthetic. Down. tricky. If she goes down, we might best just hand inject the rest of it. Mm. It just depends where she goes and how far she goes down. It's annoying. That is the problem with hand injecting, as opposed to darting. So, John, all the training that Kaz has put in to encourage Aisha to accept a hand injection kind of half worked because you got half the drug in. It's a bit like working with children, isn't it? I mean, sometimes they behave, sometimes they don't. I mean, cats, they're not machines. So they won't necessarily do everything you want them to do, even after training, every time. I'm a stranger. So if nothing else, the one thing that's odd to her is me. Now, the fact that I'm doing something else, a little nip or whatever, is an additional oddity, so I'm not surprised. Mm. And see how sedate that makes her when she's had partial injection, and if she's close enough for me to just, you know, give her the rest of it, that's what we'll do. She has gone very dozy, and she's got her head right against the door we need to open. So I'm just going to open the door a little bit and then just give her the rest of it by hand injection, hopefully. But if she springs up when I'm doing that, I'm going to come out very rapidly. But I think for safety reasons, I'm afraid I'm going to ask you to step outside. Do you know I'm not going to give her the whole lot? What John's done then is shown all of his experience because uh, he's just had to go in and further inject Aisha as she hasn't had the full dose. He's done that really at his own peril. Very brave man. Well done, John. OK. Well, she's fast asleep, actually. It's really tense today. You can absolutely cut the atmosphere with a knife. Go on. Well, let her stop twitching, I think. Bloody my mother. Come on, Martha. John, is that OK to come in? Yeah, yeah. Hang on, everybody. Just hang on. One, come on, two, let's get on with it. Poor Charlotte looks so nervous and so worried, but all the professionals here today are a little bit nervous, as you would be when you're anaesthetizing a 19-year-old tiger. Okay. Time is now critical. Aisha can't stay under for more than three hours. So now it's all systems go. While Matt is looking at Aisha's teeth, I've got a list of problems that Charlotte wants me to look at. 
Uh, so just clipping Aisha's leg, um, we're just going to put in a IV catheter just to have IV access, but also so we can take a sample of blood and just see how healthy this girl is. She's an old girl, she's 19, so I just need to check her liver and kidney health, particularly her kidney health, just like a domestic cat, their kidneys do start becoming a little bit uh, dysfunctional as they get older. While Scott and Matt quickly get to work, John is closely monitoring Aisha's erratic breathing. She's a strange breather. She seems to forget about breathing from time to time. It's very odd. Are you happy with me to start taking teeth out? Oh, yeah. Yep. I could crack on with it. It's just assessing this right fore, which is the one that this tiger's been quite painful on. She's definitely lame but I can't see that any of those nails are growing in to the pads. So that's not the cause for her lameness, so it's more likely to be arthritic change, which wouldn't be a surprise in an older girl like this. It is very useful where we've got work going on, you know, obviously in a mouth, that there's somebody else on hand who can then be doing these other things. And again, it just cuts the time down. So Scott's got his to-do list, so he'd be ticking those items off. Oh, ouch, look at that. So just having a look at the nails here, we can see she's uh, like an old cat that has slightly overgrown nails. She's not walking the roughly she was before, and so they're going to grow a little longer, so I'm just going to trim them. OK, ready? Yep. OK, close your eyes. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Job done. Yep, they all look really good. Good. Little, little grandma pedicure. <laughs> While Scott's getting through his list, the dental isn't going as smoothly. Matt has successfully removed the first two teeth, but the third won't budge. We're not near yet. We've still got two roots on this tooth to take out. It's wobbling around so much in there. I really feel for Matt. A tiger dental at age 19 is really difficult. They're huge teeth. And also, because she's older, a lot of her teeth are actually welded to the bone. It's called ankylosis. Ah, nearly. It is so really, really close. Now, you're doing very well not to swear. When it comes out, there'll be an almighty hallelujah. So close to coming out. Can I help you? So we're just removing the lower molar on the left-hand side, and uh, it's being a little tricky. So I'm just helping Matt wherever I can, <laughs> but it's quite a struggle, and he is breaking into a sweat. That's part of it. We could easily get the rest of it out there. Oh, so you got some teeth out. Well done, man. Wow. That was bloody hard work. Um, um, we're in two hours, two hours 20. Time is running out, but the team still has work to do on Aisha's other side. Moving on to the forelimb of Aisha, I have a little feel of her wrist joint, the carpal joint, and also the elbow joint. Quite a lot of sort of nuts and bolts kind of grinding going on in her elbow, so... Oof. Really. <laughs> clunks there on full extension, really clunks. So as a result, there's quite a bit of arthritic change within this joint and it would absolutely explain why she's quite lame. She's just got elbow arthritis. Nah, she's an old girl that just needs some anti-inflammatories. The last troublesome tooth is finally out. Yeah, it was hard work, but the outcome is the, the main thing. How hard we have to work doesn't really matter. We've just got to do the last bit of suturing, and then we can wake her up. OK, one, two, three, yeah. It's been a long procedure, but a worthy one. We've managed to assess a lot of different issues, and now, fingers crossed, she wakes up. An anxious Charlotte is sneaking a very quick look at her precious old girl. So there you have it. One Tiger Dental done. How are you feeling? I'm relieved. <laughs> Well, I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah, I'm massively relieved. We've done all the work that we needed to do. 
So it was a massive team effort. So looking forward to um, seeing her back properly up on her feet and chuffing in her normal Asia style. So yeah, the moment she's feeling groggy, feeling like she's got a bad hangover, but all the signs are really good. Right, and now to see our girl. I hope uh, the other poor patient. mouth isn't too sore. Yes. She seemed really good this morning. So, yeah. Yeah, again, just as if nothing had happened, really. It's so tough, so aren't tough. they? So tough. Make us feel like complete wimps. Yeah. Hello. Hello, baby. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you? Oh, baby oh. girl. How are you? So a bit of leftover blood. Yeah, but the breast smells so much better yeah. already. Hey? How was oh, that? Was that horrible dentist mean to you, was he? <laughs> No worse wear this morning, is she? No. Hey? She's, but she's really hungry because she's been starved down over a few days. So I think we probably better give her Feed something. Her, put her out of her misery. Do you want to have some food, sweetheart? You earned it, haven't you? What's mummy got for you? Hey? Let's see you first bit. There you go. I'm really happy with the way that Aisha's surgery went. It was really challenging, but we got to remove all the teeth that we needed to at the same time as ironing out some of her old lady issues. Gonna say goodbye to me. Bye bye, Good gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. No. Yes, I love That's you. That's a too. nice goodbye, Aishi. Yes. We'll put her on some anti inflammatories to help to manage her arthritis, but apart from that, her bloods have come back really good, so Charlotte can rest easy knowing that she's got a very healthy old girl. Charlotte, it's been such an incredible opportunity. Thank you so much for Oh, thanks me for being a part of it. Be involved. And what an incredible <laughs> team we assembled, and uh, we got a great outcome. A happy girl who's. Uh, Got a healthy mouth again, and hopefully we'll live here for a lot longer with you. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Paws crossed. Bye, baby. Love you. As always, I've absolutely loved my time here at the Isle of Wight, and to be able to work with these majestic creatures and the fantastic Charlotte is always a complete privilege. So I do hope it's not too long before I'll be back visiting again. And how's our new patient? He's a bit naughty. A bit naughty. Yeah. Uncooperative. Uncooperative. And it will be a challenge. We'll have our work cut out for us today oh, then. Certainly will. Yes. We certainly will. You're going to be the maid. <laughs> <laughs> We've got him out the back, so he's ready and waiting. Okay. We've got this. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks Rosemary. Rosemary. Rosemary's got this sly little smile on, so I'm starting to get nervous. Hello. But it's not a room that Rosemary has lined up for the girls today. <laughs> So we walk to the back of the house and there's a cage inside a cage. Oh, hello. He doesn't look that cute. bad. So we go up to the cage and we see a cute little wombat. Hi. Oh! <laughs> Spot not happy. I love wombats. I think they're so cute and cuddly. They look like they wouldn't hurt a fly and then you meet Spot. Oh, that was oh. lunch. So Rosary's mentioned that she has seen that there's a problem with his teeth. That's why we're here. We want to give them a good look. So the action plan today mm -hmm. is we have to get the one back out Yes, first. we have to get the one bat out now. That is the challenge. <laughs> but the problem with one bats is when they bite you, they actually bite and twist. So they do quite a lot of damage if they get, say, your finger or something stuck in their mouth. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh Lord. There's snarling, there's growling, he's lunging at us. He's just completely turned 360. Oh no! <laughs> he's going to jump. Do you think he'll jump up? Spot urgently needs dental work, but first, the girls have to catch him. So he seems so sweet when he's just... He, he is sweet when you're just not doing anything to him. We need to do things to him. So Spot was found on the side of the road with his mother, who had been hit by a car and had unfortunately passed away. And he's been angry ever since. We're gonna have to maybe get him to one side of this bin and someone come from behind and sedate him in the thigh. And so someone does the jabbing and someone does the... Um, Distracting. Distraction. Mm -hmm. Which end do you want? I think you're better at jabbing. Okay, you can get the bite I'll end. get the distraction bitey end. Mm -hmm. You've got to get that needle in like straight away because he's going to be thrashing and I have nothing to protect you with. The towel. The towel is not going to do <laughs> anything. <laughs> Grab me the broomstick. Yeah. I'm a little bit scared because I'm really depending on Alison to be very distracting with her broom and just get him to try and bite her instead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Pray for me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. God. I'm not feeling confident. I'm not feeling confident with this head. 
Okay, do you want me to cover? Give, give me the cap. Cover the head? Oh, ah! I'm not covering the head! I think I can. Ah! No. Go, 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 go! Ah! I did it, I did it. Ah! I'm kind of but I did it. Close it, close it, close it, close it. Yeah! I think the needle. But I think it went Did in. you give him the whole dose? Yeah, it's point two. So we're just going to make sure that he is sleepy enough for us to carry him because that sedation is going to wear off pretty quick. You want to give him a bit of a nudge? Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> the girls must move quickly before mm -hmm. Spot wakes up. <laughs> oh my god, he's so angry. He's somewhere in there. Quick, oh, quick. He's, waking he's, waking up, up. he's waking up, he's waking up, he's waking up. Oh my god, a bit of a bumpy ride. After finally managing to capture Spot the Wombat, Alison and Audrey are keen to get started on his dental surgery. Oh, watch that claw. Oh, you are not right. So we constantly have to monitor their heart rate, their respiratory rate, their depth of anaesthetic, because with these guys, they can turn pretty quickly. His heart rate's good. It's a good body condition. It's a good body condition, considering he's had a bit of trouble eating, so we're quite pleased with that. Yeah, so we've definitely done some damage to those top incisors. It's quite sharp. I think that's what's cutting his lip at the top. Given how shattered those top teeth are, it's probably the reason why he's so angry, because yeah. it must be quite sore. So we'll file down his teeth just because there are some sharp edges there that are cutting into his lip. Yeah. Wombats have open rooted teeth, and that means that their teeth continue to grow throughout their life. Once we get those sharp bits out the way and it grows through, they should be well enough to be able to eat and drink normally again. So as we're using the electric drill to file down those teeth to make it nice and smooth, we've got to make sure that we don't overheat the surface. So I'm getting Alison to just dribble some water onto the surface of the teeth and that should drill away nicely for us. He's getting light, can you turn him back on yep. please? So we're just going to keep analysing his depth and as soon as we feel like he's getting light, we'll put the mask back on for a little bit. It's vital that Spot stays sedated so he doesn't wake up and bite Audrey's hands. I've only got a little bit more to do on that side, and then I'm happy. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with what we've done today. Um, those teeth feel really nice and smooth. There's no sharp edges there that are going to cut into his lip when he's trying to eat. Uh, so I think he'll feel a lot more comfortable now. OK. Back to where you were before, like nothing happened. It's so hard looking at him now to think how aggressive and he was. he's so cute right now. He looks like an angel just sleeping there. Good night, Spot. Sleepy sleep. So it's great that this is now done so that once he's recovered, he can be safely released back into the wild. Here we go, buddy. Sleepy sleep. Well, it's just that the tooth's starting to break up now and the top one could come down and crunch into it. It wasn't that long ago that we had to anaesthetise her and take nearly all her teeth out. We left two, we thought she could chew those, a top and bottom tooth at the back. Just pop her up here, Ray, for me, just lean her over. Here's a good guy, Sally, my darling. Carol and Ray rescued Sally from a puppy farm. Her condition was so bad that her teeth were falling out and her kidney and liver functions were compromised. The poor little teats that she had were hanging down about an inch. And um, it was, that was so sad when I saw her like that. And then when I brought her home, she just scuttled straight into a corner. She was so terrified. The top tooth's gone. Oh, has it? Yeah, oh. it's just the bottom tooth. The bottom tooth's going into the jaw, into the top jaw, virtually. The bottom tooth is jamming itself into that top jaw over and over again. Every time she just closes her mouth, that's happening to her. If we let it keep going, it'll eventually infect the bone, which we don't want. An, an infection of the bone is called osteomyelitis. If she gets an infection of the bone, there's hell to pay. We're not going that far. We'll take that tooth out today. She's not had an easy life, and thank God for you people, giving her such a beautiful home. She's very spoiled, Carol. She pirouettes beautifully when I get up and say good morning to her. She's like a ballerina. I come out and I say, good morning, Sally. And she looks at me and she does pirouette. It's really interesting. She goes round and round. Yeah. OK, let's do it. Bye, treasure. See you soon. Rob will need her to pass a vital blood test. 
Good girl, good girl. This is to make sure that all her organ functions and everything is fine before we do the anaesthetic. She's been through such trauma in her life, it wouldn't be unusual for her to have some issues of kidney function or liver function. And of course, that's going to affect the anaesthetic. Okay, we'll put these in the lab. I have a real soft spot for this little dog, to be honest. I tend to feel a bit for her, for what she's been through. Dogs don't ask to be brought into the world, but when they are, we owe it to them. It behoves us to give them a decent life. She had anything but that at the start. All this for one tooth, one tooth. All her bloods have come back normal, really normal, which is great. Like I said, she really has had a really rough start to life. So we're happy. We're just going to still use gas because we want to get her home as quickly as possible. Okay, lights on. Camera action. And that's a really big tooth. You can see the hole that's forming in there. And we don't want it to break through that gum line up the top and into the bone or we're in trouble. So that tooth even though in itself it's probably a healthy tooth, has to go. Her teeth were rotting before. They were literally falling out of her. And in fact, the infection was causing a lot of problems. Even her, last time we did bloods on her, she was not good. And it was all because of infection from the mouth, from the rotten teeth. Um, and we ended up having to take all but two teeth out. One of those two teeth that we left has fallen out. And so now we've got to take this last one out. You grab some swabs, please, Alessandra. Thanks. Just swab it there for me. But it has to come out because it's causing a lot of damage to the the uh, top jaw. You know, it's digging in. It's got a hole there, and it's hurting her. Yeah, you know, it's actually causing her pain now. Okay, our job is done. All that root there, all that was inside the bone. One stitch, and we're done. With the problematic tooth now removed safely, it's time to wake Sally up. It's me. <laughs> hey guys, here she is. All done, all done. Darling, so lovely to see you. She's a little bit groggy uh, from the gas, but she'll be more and more awake. By the time we get home, she'll be fully awake. Now, do you want the tooth put under her pillow tonight for the tooth fairy? Uh, no. No. No, okay. I've got any thruppances anymore. <laughs> no thruppances? No. What happened to them? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> What's pretty to you? Whatever she's been eating normally, whatever yes. you've been giving her, yeah, don't change don't it. Change Pumpkin, it. carrots, really soft, really cooked up. Yeah. We don't want al dente, they're going to be soft. Yeah. So That's soft and mashed, yeah. yeah. Oh, so relieved, and she looks so good, so beautiful, don't you, darling? I'd say tomorrow morning there'll be Come pirouettes, on. won't there? Little pirouettes. <laughs> All the best. Keep dancing, then. Keep dancing. Thank you so much. Pleasure, darling. Oh, All the best. So, yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Oh. Yeah, he's got pongy breath. Breath that only a mother would love. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I thought all dogs smell like that. Stanley's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and they have the same amount of teeth as any other dog but crammed into a tiny little mouth, which just means that some of them are at odd angles, they accumulate tartar a little bit faster and even with the owner's best efforts to keep the teeth clean, sadly they do lose more teeth than most other breeds. What we've got here, my friend, is a loose tooth. So actually the premolars, they're the ones between the canines, the sort of catching teeth and the molars, the grinding teeth, is actually quite loose. Will he have been in a lot of pain from that? In the past with his uh, neck pain, he's not been possibly the bravest puppy in the world. Yeah, exactly. So I think in this instance, if it was sore, he would tell us. And you're not okay. telling us, you're just trying to lick us to death, aren't you, <laughs> hey? So Stanley's going to be staying with me today and during that time we're going to have to knock him out under a general anaesthetic uh, and then we'll be assessing all the teeth but definitely removing those two loose ones. Oh. Wish Mummy and I stay at work. Yeah, and I'll see you later. Mm. Say bye Mummy. Say bye. bye. See you later. Well, bye. See you again. See you Angie bye. Hannah. Bye. Say bye Mummy. Come on then Stanley. Let's go see Spot. We 
Yeah. Hello, champ. Mm, have you copped a whiff yet? Just a bit, just a bit stinky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Bless he's, him. He's not been using his Listerine, has he? No, definitely oh, not. Yeah, yeah. Stanley was actually quite a brave boy today. His pain threshold normally isn't particularly high, but he let me put the catheter in. He was a very good boy. Nasty tartar and grossness on that tooth there. As soon as Scott begins the dental work on Stanley, it becomes obvious this is going to be a much bigger job than expected. I had a good look in the mouth and then started to chip away at all that nasty tartar which had accumulated on his teeth and I actually found that his dental disease was quite a lot worse than I anticipated. So Jess, we're at six teeth now, soon to be number seven, and that's only on just one side, so a bit of a surprise. The motto for teeth is, if in doubt, pull it out. So legs underneath, one, two, three, and over. Good boy. Good boy. Right. Had to take quite a few out. I'm gonna have to count the ones I've left in rather than the ones I pulled out soon. <laughs> so they're just falling out. Yeah, some of these teeth are really pretty bad hardly having to pull them at all. As long as they're out of pain, that's the main thrust of what we're doing today. And he's gonna be much more comfortable with all these teeth out and his breath will smell a lot better as a result. So there we go, just all finished. Um, and all the teeth that remain are nice and white and healthy now, but uh, yeah, quite a few teeth <laughs> removed more than I thought. How many has he actually got left then? Well, he's got 19 left, but I removed 10. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait till mummy hears about that, hey? Yeah. Let's let you wake up then, big guy, hey? Yeah. So today, of course, he's lost quite a few teeth, but what he's also lost is some pretty horrendous breath. And I think Hannah's gonna thank me for that. And certainly uh, her cuddles with him at night times might be a little more plentiful now that he doesn't stink so badly. Good boy, sleep it off. Wakey, wakey. Mummy's come to pick you up soon. Yeah. Later that day, Stanley is ready to go home. Good boy. Oh, straight away I can smell your breath smells better. Oh. The King Charles Cavalier Spaniel has recovered well from his drastic dental work. Who's that? Who's that? Oh, Stanley! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. There he is. Oh, he looks so well. So the news, of course, is that he has lost quite a few more teeth than I anticipated. Okay. Um, it's gone from what I thought was maybe two or four to yeah. a full ten. Um, he's got 19 left, so fear not. He's got. I've left more okay. than I've taken away. Um, but what is very good and hopefully yeah. will uh, mean that he gets more snuggles with you is that his breath is a lot his better. Breath is so. so... Oh my god, okay. it's really, really good. Yeah. He's still got enough, apparently, to chew, and all the main ones are kind of still intact. So he just hasn't got a full-on Hollywood smile. It's kind of like a gappy Hollywood smile. Oh, all right, then. You did so well, though. Well, thank you so yeah, much for Thank um, you me. so much um, for doing we'll, such a great job. And we will continue to monitor him Brilliant. as we have. Thank you very much, Scott. It was great to see that after a big day here at the practice, Stanley still had a wag in his tail for Hannah. Bye, thank you. Yes, Stanley lost 10 teeth, but he's gained much nicer breath. And that's gonna mean he's gonna get many more cuddles with mum in bed, which is only a good thing. Chris's patient is a 20 year old black and white ruffed lemur, which has lived at the zoo for six months. We don't get a lot of lemurs rolling up to the clinic in Bondi. So seeing lemurs is a rare event for me. So, Chris, this is uh, Stephanie and her partner, Sahala. OK. And this is their keeper, Danielle. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, how you going? So, I've got a zoo to run, mate. I'm off, leaving Danny's capable hands. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, a sore tooth. Yeah, so a couple of months after Stephanie arrived here, I started to notice that her tooth is getting a little bit brown, just from what you could see hanging out of her mouth. The concern is that the tooth is badly infected. If Stephanie is in pain, it'll be hard for Chris to get close enough to treat her. Lemurs are highly temperamental. They can be aggressive. They decide who they like, and they tend to stick with that opinion. If this lemur doesn't like me, this isn't going to go well. So which one's she? So this is Stephanie over here, and this is Sahala, her partner. So which tooth are we worried about? So it's on her left side. 
it just looks unhealthy compared to the others. There is obviously something wrong, we're just not entirely sure what the issue is just yet. <laughs> All right, so we need to have a look at her. How we do that? One sneaky way of doing it is give her a little treat and then try to lift up the side really gently with your finger. Do you mind if we just have a little, you know, a look in there? <laughs> it's clear, is it? She wants the food, but she doesn't yeah. want the examination. Yeah. Each time I get anywhere near that tooth, she's just pushing me away. She's doing what everyone wants to do to the dentist. She's just smart enough to do it. Time, hold on really hard. Oh, look, a little look there. No, don't push me away. Thank you. No. <laughs> An untreated infection could be life-threatening, but Chris can't get close enough to examine the tooth. The big problem we're facing here is that everything in this enclosure is in Stephanie's favour. What we need to do is turn things around so they're more in our favour, so we can actually look at that tooth. The only way to do that is to get her inside a pet pack and take her to the vet clinic. I get the occasional sneaky little look in there. I can see that tooth is brown, yep. so it is worth looking at. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I agree. The only thing is there's a possibility that she's pregnant. So I, right. we saw them mating quite a lot about a month ago and it's kind of stopped since then, okay. so... Anything we do has to take into consideration. Exactly, that... we have to be careful. Yep. Yep. All right. With numbers for these lemurs fairly limited, her being pregnant would be good news. But the complication here is that she has that bad tooth that may need an anaesthetic to have it removed. Anaesthetics and pregnancy don't mix well. Almost there, girl. Chris, along with keeper Danny and Stephanie the lemur, have arrived at Hamilton Animal Health Clinic, 90 minutes from the Halls Gap Zoo. All right, so she's travelled pretty well, Nat. Great. Now, the, obviously the main concern is this tooth. Yep. But, as Danny told me, the other concern is the fact she might be pregnant. Oh, okay. Dr Natalie Roadknight will assist Chris with Stephanie's ultrasound. Chris needs to find out if the lemur is pregnant before he can do anything about her problem tooth. Sorry, darling. Good girl, Steph. Thanks. Thanks. If Stephanie is pregnant, it's critical she's under anaesthetic for as little time as possible. The longer she's knocked out, the greater the risk to her unborn young. So I'm just doing a bit of a sweep through her belly now. Just looking for any, I guess, fluid-filled sacs that yeah. would indicate she's pregnant. Sometimes looking at ultrasounds can be quite tricky. It can be like looking at a fuzzy TV screen, but in this situation, it should be easy because a pregnancy should show up as a black ball if it's there. I can feel her bladder right down the end, but moving forward to where her uterus is, I'm not feeling a lot. Okay, so going on what I'm feeling and what I'm seeing, I don't think she's pregnant. Danny does actually seem okay with the news, and I'm sure a large part of that comes from the fact that with her not being pregnant, it means if we do need to operate on this tooth, we can. With Stephanie all clear to remain under anaesthetic, Chris can now safely examine that tooth. Okay, so you're certainly right about it being discoloured compared to the other ones there that are actually quite white and quite clean. This one here is very dark. So we need to explain why that one's gone that colour. There are really two possibilities with this. Mm -hmm. Either she's got an infection in the base of that tooth, actually in the root, yeah. that's causing this tooth to change colour or she's lost blood and she's lost nerve supply to that tooth. Okay. And the tooth essentially died. If left untreated, an infection could spread to other parts of the body and even cause life-threatening septicemia. The only way to know for sure that infection isn't causing this tooth to be so discoloured is to take an x-ray. Right there? Yes. Okay, on three, one, two, three. In Western Victoria, Chris is looking for clues to why Stephanie the lemur's tooth is discoloured. Got it? Yeah, I think we've got it. The concern is that a severe infection may be the cause. Now we've managed to get these shots, it's time to look at what we're dealing with. So, this is the tooth we're worried about. Do you see that? Yeah, it looks completely different to the other yeah. one. Yeah. The moment I see those x-rays, Something doesn't quite make sense. It's not what I expected to see. Oh. <laughs> it's quite bizarre, actually, because what you're seeing 
happened many years ago. Okay. She's, she's had a root canal. See how the root of this tooth here is that bright white? Yep. She's actually had that filled. Okay. She's had an injury in the past or an infection to that tooth, which has actually killed all the living tissue inside that tooth. Yep. They've had to fill it. At the time, that tooth would have been white. They would never have thought there would be a problem. Mm -hmm. But as time's gone on, the tooth's actually died because it's got no more living tissue. Okay. It's become brown. Yeah. It's only just become brown. Yeah, so when it, we've noticed it. Yeah. yeah. Not for a second did I think this would be the reason that tooth is that colour. The great news for everyone, especially Stephanie, is the fact we do not need to remove this tooth. So it shouldn't cause her any problems. I'm very happy to hear that. It's not what I expected to see. Oh, right. <laughs> I didn't expect to see that either. There aren't many lemurs, full stop, there aren't many lemurs going around with root canals <laughs> in their mouths. Yeah. Now that we know the truth about Stephanie's tooth, there's one more thing we can do for her. Give her a teeth clean. A clean up will remove a build up of tartar and any dangerous bacteria that could cause Stephanie health issues down the track. Done. So we're obviously not going to be able to whiten that tooth for her, but yeah. the good news is that it's not going to be sore. There's no infection there. Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah. We've managed to solve a lot of mysteries in the last few minutes, so now it's time to wake her up. You're going to be all right. There you go, Steph. Stephanie will spend the next few hours recovering before returning home to the Halls Gap Zoo. I'm extremely relieved that Stephanie didn't have to have massive surgery today. I would have been even more stressed out, I think, and it just is going to make her transition back at the zoo a lot more easier. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.